We had so much fun talking with Alan Malventano a couple of weeks ago. It's time for part two of our SSD Explain Everything So You Can Understand It. Alan Malventano writes about SSDs and other hardware uh, for PC Perspective at PCPer.com as a regular on our This Week in Computer Hardware show. Hey, Alan. Hey, how's it going? So I think we, we covered kind of the beginnings, I hope enough to convince people that buying an SSD in your next computer would be a good idea and that even maybe in many computers upgrading to an SSD would be a good idea. But I think there's also, and I hear it every time I tell people that, there are a lot of myths about SSDs versus hard drives. What are, what are the biggest myths that you would like to bust about SSDs? Uh, I think the largest one out there is probably the like reliability and right. retention. There's a lot of fear that their data is just going to like evaporate or something if it's not stored magnetically. Right. Um, yeah. What do we know? I mean, are these as reliable? Well, uh, I have a slide that I can kind of talk to here, and that's uh, the actual JDEC like the, the standards body that governs, okay, if a company is going to release an SSD and they're going to claim that their SSD uh, has so much endurance, then there's like rules for what they're allowed to do. So the SSD will be such a capacity, it'll be like a 500 gig SSD, and it'll be rated for something like 40 or 80 terabytes written. So you could write that drive like you know hundreds of times filled and then fill it again over and over and over again. And it would take average... Average Joe just using an SSD just for regular computer tasks, they're not going to hit this limit probably in a decade. A decade? Right? Well, that's yeah, plenty it would, of time. It would, it would probably take them that long to get through all that stuff. And even that's kind of a conservative number wow. to use there. Like, they, they probably go even, if they're just checking email and playing games occasionally, they're going to go longer than that. The SSD is probably going to outlast them. But going back to that standards thing, so for a, a consumer SSD, uh, there's a rating of one year worth of data retention, and that's at the end of life at the SSD. So that assumes that you have expended all of the possible rights to it. You have just worn that thing down to just nothing, basically. And even then, you should be able to take it out of that system, put it on a shelf for 52 weeks, and it should still hold the data. We had some discussion on one of the threads on our site recently. People were uh, wondering, hey, can I buy a brand new SSD and use it for backup? You can course it's just a storage device and if you did you're only writing to it a couple of times there uh and it so it will hold data for much longer because you haven't worn out the flash at all it's basically brand new so there's um, no reason to worry about reliability when it comes to an ssd they're at least as reliable well, as a spinning hard drive yeah you're still going to have things like component failures you're still going to have well, things like that's going to uh, happen right yeah like like in what's called infant mortality which is right. where if you have a, a component on there that's just a defect and it'll probably fail within a few months' time. Is it fair to say that almost everybody should consider an SSD? I know they're a little bit more expensive, but that the performance boost is significant enough that almost everybody should consider an SSD for a new computer and, and even for upgrading an old computer. Uh, you should at least consider it. And then the biggest misnomer there is don't do only the SSD. You know, if you have a lot of stuff to store, put it on the hard drive. Put the bigger stuff on the hard drive. Don't go buying you know, a terabyte's worth of solid state to store all of your stuff that's just going to be sitting in one place and right. just, you don't need to access it very quickly. What should we do to maintain our SSDs? Is there anything I need to do to think about? It has gotten to the point where if you're on any of the more modern operating systems, uh, there's pretty much nothing to change. There's just... Uh, there, Tr there, Trim Windows is turned on by default in Windows and OS X. Trim is turned on by default. That means that anytime you delete a file or any file gets moved off of a space, the operating system will let the SSD know, hey, I don't need that place anymore. And then the SSD can, uh, you know, clean that, that place up with what's called garbage collection. Uh, and it just has more extra room to spread the data that you're using or like around on the Why flash. Why is so that if, important? When you write to it, it has to do a thing called where leveling. So if, you, if your operating system kept writing and updating the same place, what would be the same place on a hard disk, uh, you can't do that to Flash because it'll actually burn out that spot. So it, it has to maintain what's just like a, a, a mapping table inside of its memory. Uh, and while the operating system keeps writing to that same place, it says, okay, go ahead, I'm, you know, I'm going to put it there. That's fine, trust me. But it actually puts it somewhere else physically on the Flash, right? Um, and the more of those places that you have assigned, that you've uh -huh. had to have, keep track of, right, um, 
that's generally bad for the SSD because it's it's more work that it has to do, right? It has this huge table of stuff. If you've written to the entire drive, you know, every single place, and unless you are able to tell the drive, hey, I don't need that spot anymore, there has to be some kind of a protocol in place, which is called trim. Uh, that frees up those areas because if you recall for hard disks, you could always do like a data recovery. If you delete a file, you didn't actually delete the file, you know, because you're just kind of deleting the entry in the directory, right? Uh, for SSDs, as long as trim is in place, when you delete the file, the file's actually gone. Like it's, it might still be sitting in flash somewhere, but it, the table entry to even look up where it is has now been purged. And chances are it's, it's going to be garbage collected in a, in a short amount of time as well. So the issue is that each cell on an SSD can only be read to or written to a certain number of times. Is that correct? The issue is the writing. You could writing, read them as many as you want. Writing. How many times correct. typically can you write to an MLC or an SLC cell? Uh, it, varies, it varies by the type of flash, but a good number is generally like around 5,000 or 10,000 okay. times. That's quite a lot. Uh, and then, sure. so they over-provision then to give you a little headroom there, or how does that work? They do that as well. Consumer drives usually have what's, what's called uh, extra, just over-provisioning. Extra it's just space. Extra, yeah, it's <laughs> extra space. It's not within the range that you can write to. Uh, and usually it's but somewhere between... But if a cell gets to the limit of its writability, they'd say, okay, we're not going to use that one anymore. Let's, let's rope in one of these unknown, unused cells. And yep, that'll and, uh, and there's usually 5 to 7% extra on consumer drives, there's a lot more on enterprise. When we were building Uvergum, of course we used an M.2 SSD in the Uvergum. You, we talked a little bit about this and you said actually one way to maintain a drive is to defrag it, which I thought that's the last thing you'd need to do on an SSD. <laughs> well, you're not actually defragging it in the sense of moving a bunch of stuff around. You're okay. just using the Windows defragger, which by the way is automatic. It's uh, especially it's in like anyway, a- no matter what? Well, at Windows 8, Windows 10, like if yeah. you've just done a regular install, it not only is automatic, like scheduled weekly, I believe by default, but if it detects that a drive is a solid state drive, and it has a way to do that, uh, it will just do a trim pass of that drive as opposed to a defragment pass. And there are, there are actual, a few cases, they're rare, where uh, some pointers might have just been like really split up logically, like, they're not actually fragmented within the flash, but, like, Windows has to do a lot of work to look up a particular file. And defrag also can uh, kind of unfragment, like, those specific cases. Uh, and that does mean you have to move around a little bit of stuff, but it's nothing like running, a, you know, an old-school defragment where it's trying to rearrange everything on the disk because that'll just burn through yeah, right you don't want to do that. How about on OS X on the Macintosh? Same thing? Uh, yeah, OS X is... Is trim aware? Um, and it's doing be, it periodically, automatically. Uh, I believe so. But yeah. the thing you have to be careful of on OS 10, if you're upgrading a Mac uh, from a hard drive to a solid state drive, you have to pay attention and either use some kind of. Um, I know there's a trim enabler, which it's become harder and harder to use. But uh, it, either you have to use an OEM Mac part uh, for it to automatically enable trim for you, since it'll be on like a list within the operating system. Uh, or you have to take some steps to kind of All force right. it to enable that. Anything else I should know? Are there BIOS settings I should pay attention to? Any other settings I should do to maximize yeah, yeah. My, my SSD? Uh, actually, uh, when you were doing your, your VR build, uh, there were some, I know there were some extra steps you had to go through, which I think oh, were just specific to that board. Yeah. The thing that you're going to want to do if you have an NVMe, like M.2 NVMe, one of the brand new uh, SSDs, uh, you're going to want to make your Windows installer, when you make your USB Windows installer, uh, your, your safest bet is to download the image from Microsoft. When you download the Microsoft, it pa they packages it as a tool that will just put it straight on a USB drive for you. The but media, I like the media to, creation tool, Microsoft. Yeah, the media also. creation tool. Yeah. But you can instruct that tool to download an image instead. And then I use a tool called Rufus, which I'm sure you guys have yeah. talked about in yeah. the past. Yeah. There's an option at the top which is the method that it's going to boot. You want to go for the bottom option, I believe, which is where it is a straight uh, UEFI style boot. And this is specific to M.2 NVMe drives, if you're going to do an install there. Right? Why is that? In order to boot from NVMe SSDs in your BIOS, in your UEFI BIOS, you have to disable what's called the compatibility support module. If you disable that option, and you have an older style formatted Windows 10 installer USB drive, uh, your BIOS won't see that drive when you try to boot. 
Like if you've turned that you know CSM what? off. It's so funny because we had that problem as well. Russell told me, well, try it with Rufus and it worked. Yeah, so, yeah. so, you, have, so we you have to turn off okay. you have to turn off CSM so that your system will be able to boot from the M.2 drive once the installer is like halfway through, right? Windows, uh, is there anything it can't screw up? Well, this is actually a legacy problem ah. with BIOS. It's, ah. it's, it's a BIOS-specific problem. CSM exists so that your system can boot from the older stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, so at the office, actually at PC Perspective, we keep two USB installers just for this case. It's the same ISO. It's just, you know, written the old way, the NBR style way oh, and, the, uh, and the UEFI way. Well, yep. they told me that we'd be able to get this entire segment into a second segment. I didn't believe them, and I was right. There is so much more to talk about. Will you come back again someday, and we'll talk sure. more about SSDs. Alan Malventano is the king. He knows all, tells all. You can read more at PCPer.com, Alan's reviews. Lots of great information, and, of course, watch him every week on This Week in Computer Hardware with Ryan Shroud, also of PC Perspective, and my buddy Patrick Norton from TechThink. Thank you so much, Alan. Thanks for having me on. I do think we'll have to do another one. <laughs> uh, I have since learned a little bit more about UEFI and CSM and ESP. And uh, it's actually not as complicated as it sounds. The main thing is most modern computers use UEFI. Don't mix your modes. If, hmm. uh, if you wanted to boot some BIOS booting uh, media, you would use CSM, the compatibility module. But in general, you want to turn off CSM. Do everything UEFI.